Whenever you're ready. All right, Panther fans. There's no victory cigars. There's there's no smiles. There's no laughing. Stu nope. has a prepared 45 minute rant for us. Stu, let's go. <laughs> no, nope. just you know, pretty much a one sentence take on things. Probably one of the worst games they played this year. Yeah, maybe except maybe for the other Seattle game. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe as bad as the first year. I, I don't understand. You got the worst team in the league. Okay, you're riding uh, a two good victories, and you come out sloppy as can be. Yep. And you have a goalie that's, you know, I mean, Grubauer's a good goalie, but, you know, you got the rest of the team. I, I As I've told you many times, Every team is gunning for us, right? Whether it's you know Tampa, the Capitals, or the Seattle Kraken. Yep. I think they came in with a lot of confidence because they did beat us the first game yeah. around. Yeah. 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 They're in their home building. You know, they're they're playing the top team in the league. They got nothing to lose. And right. You got a team that's got nothing to lose. Right. You know, they're pretty loosey goosey. You know, so they get the lead, but then we tie it up. Yeah. And that's when we kicked it into, you know, that high gear that we, you know, when we turned the switch on. Yep. It's unfortunate yep. that we couldn't have gotten another goal before the period ended. But as you remember, when you were like, you know, F this, the game's over. I said, you know, stop being negative. Hey, that was mid, that was mid third period. That wasn't second period. Yeah, that all was, right. But that was after I said, <laughs> if we tie it, if we tie it up before the end of the second, we got a good shot. And I thought they were going to come out like gangbusters. Right. Um, Marchment right in front has, you know, the game on his stick and he doesn't make the play and they come down and I, you know, Weger had his worst. He had to pick the Seattle game, have his worst game. He looked horrible. Yeah. I also blame the forwards. Like the last goal, not the empty net, but the last goal, Huberdeau pulled the Trocek and just basically coasted back right. instead of instead of hustling and covering his men, which is just, you know, unbelievable because they even highlighted, you know, a play where it was on the opposite end where it was kind of sort of like going to be an icing and Huberdeau raced down there. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So yeah, I just yeah. – I don't get it, but um, I don't think Bob had a bad game. I think he he saved our ass, you know, in the first period. Right, right. But um, a couple of those go- goals were questionable. Well, the, the last one, you liked it, you know. Th- those are the goals I said in the recap. Those are the ones he's been stopping. That, that, that's that been the biggest difference between this year and last year is those those are the goals he's been stopping – and I think even he was surprised that that one got by him. Um, I think he was all, you know, I think he was confident. He was, you see how far out of his crease he was. And um, you could just feel it when that's when I was texting that it was over and you were telling me I was being too negative. I, you could just feel it that, that when, when he let that one in, the team just kind of, you know, yeah. the, the air listen, just came out. The last two minutes of the game. I know. We missed the net five times. I know. I know. Either wide or over. Again, too much passing. Right. Okay. It should have been, you know, shot after shot after shot. Okay. So maybe it gets blocked. Right. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it goes off a body. I mean, look at Seattle's first goal. Right. Right. Well, and the other the other part to that, um, speaking of missing shots. We've got to get good at some target practice because they keep setting up this play where he's coming in all alone and he's got all the room in the world to to shoot and it's high and it's wide and it's around the boards and it's out of the zone every time, right. you know. And what did I what did I tell you about you know how good Tampa is, where their defenseman actually from the right point yeah does a slap shot pass. In other yeah. words, their player is right at the corner of the net with his, with his stick down. Right. Oh, I think it was Hedman did that play. 
And instead of shooting it short side or whatever, he takes basically takes a softer slap shot right. and puts it right on the stick of the winger or whoever is standing right at the corner, right by the pipe, and right. he deflects it in. Right. I don't right. understand why, why we don't, you know, practice that play. So now let's talk about the real reason we lost the game, and that is why is our coach taking out Max and Mammon again and putting in Frank for Toronto? And I'm being sarcastic, guys. For those of you, I'm not saying that's the reason we lost the game, but um, somebody explain that to me because Mammon has just been really good. I think he's got more goals than for Toronto. Well, well you and I are in agreement on that, and I made a, I, I, I did a, you know, as soon as I found out about it, I sent you a, a WTF. Yeah. Um, and again, for Toronto took another stupid penalty. Another I'm, stupid penalty. You know, the guy has deserved uh, a spot on the bench, just like Tippett. And I, I know you love Tippett, but Tippett is worthless. Well, now Here, let's, let's, let's. He let's, is worthless. I don't what care Tippett what you say. Do, still, you say he's defensive and he's checking. No. He can't even, he can't even keep on his skates. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to give you the part about he can't keep on his skates. That's definitely something he needs to work on. Um. And he's probably going to get the chance to work on this somewhere else. What Tippett needs to figure out is 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 sort of like Huberto. His fine. It's taken Huberto ten years to figure out. He either needs to play with that edge, or he's really just you know not great. And Tippett has shown what he can do when he gives all that effort. So when he eventually figures out that he needs to play the entire time he's on the ice, like he did the other night, then he will reach whatever potential he has. Um, but I've seen it. I've seen enough. I, I've seen enough um, for this season. Anyway, I'd love to see Mammon stay on the ice. Um, but that still leaves, you know, Mammon can't take Tippett and Vertrano's spot, right? <laughs> so that still leaves one more guy. And Marchment has not been, he's not been the same player since that concussion. He's, he's when it comes time to really bang the body in the corner, he's backing off. Well, that's what Ekblad did. Right, right, right. When, you know, Ekblad doesn't, he still does it to some extent. Yeah. But my my, my big, uh, my big bitch with Marchman last night, he had a two-on-one with Tippett. Yeah. And, and he too much, yeah. was, he was very close and he had a perfect opportunity to shoot. Right. And he passed it to Tippett, who really expected Marchman to shoot because right. 90% of the time you're on a two-on-one and you're basically left alone going in on the goalie, you're going to shoot. Right, right, right. You know, yeah. a guy a guy like Vitrano and a guy like uh, Verhage, they don't even think about passing. Right, right, right. They're yeah. shooting. Right, So, right. And then, like I said, at the end, you know, Marchment, you know, first, third period, beginning of the third period, he has another opportunity. Yeah. That's one area where I'd like to see him improve, and that's in his scoring. Right, right, right. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, but, but, but you're right. He he isn't the same. Um, it's just a bad effort last night. Yeah, no, all the way around. And you know, we're going into the game ten one and one. Okay, we look like crap in Calgary. We get two wins, and you would think that the worst team in the league. Right, and, and again, well, especially after they beat us. Go ahead. Do you think they fell prey to the let's just get dressed, step on the ice, well, we got this? That's what I was going to say. I mean, if, if they hadn't have beaten us in our own building when we were gone for the record, you could see maybe that was a trap game. But they already knew going in, if we don't play against this team, they're going to beat us. And we went out there and basically gave the same damn effort all over again that we did in the home game that we lost to them. Just sloppy, 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 yeah. sloppy. Over, over, I think, I think you're right. I mean, overconfident to me a little bit, but then also Uyghur, Um, I mean, I'm not making excuses for him and I don't know why this would be, but I mean, he lost the puck twice at the blue line in those in that last, the, the two times we lost it. He, he pulled the, he pulled the, a, a yandle, fell yeah, down yeah. at the blue line. Yeah. And the last, uh, and the empty netter. He looked the empty netter. Yeah, no, he, he, right. All right. Anyway, I, yeah. I, I said, let's keep this video short. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it was it, everybody, I'm sure, walked away from that game just disgusted. Yeah, they showed Ekblad on the bench after the empty net and he was pissed off. 
Yeah, yeah, I would be too. So what do you do with that energy? Well, you channel I feel bad it, for Winnipeg. You channel, you channel <laughs> it. Yeah, you channel yeah. it, and now you beat the crap out of Winnipeg. Yeah, yeah. If, we're, if least, we're getting 10 on the road, Winnipeg's the game. <laughs> yeah, at least salvage the road trip, you know. Right. They could go down, you know, they could go back three, three and two. It, it would be a three and two trip, which is not the end of the world. I kind of want a three, one and one. And, you know, I'm like, I mean, look, I, I'm surprised we didn't get a tight up last night either. They scored so early. And we it's had, unbelievable that we didn't score at the end of the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like I said in the recap and in the article, I'm not going to panic over this one. Um I crap. didn't even watch your recap last night. That's how disgusted I was. <laughs> I, 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 that was like the furthest I, thing I wanted to do was anything Panther related. I, I didn't even have the energy to rant. I was just like, you know what? I'm just, I'm just not, not, not this one game. When we start losing to good teams at home because we're getting out work, then I'll rant. But with the, these one-off games like this, I mean, we're going to lose games. And you know, when we start playing, when we start losing games and we're playing at our best, then I'll worry. You know what I mean? I think they said Seattle had 10 wins, maybe yeah, 11 they, wins. They didn't have all I mean, of them are against us. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're bad. It's a, I mean, their record is bad, you know, and the, all they got to do is play us. And look, I, I, I like I, I said, I think I said in the article, it's like with football. It's like, it doesn't matter how good the Patriots are and how bad the Dolphins are. When the Patriots and Dolphins play more times than not, the Dolphins find a way to win. And then the Patriots will go on and win the Super Bowl. And we're like, yay, we beat the Patriots. Sometimes there's, there's that one bad team that just has the good team's number. It just happens every once in a while. Uh, I don't oh, know. I mean, we're all for two, you know, <laughs> I, I, I agree. It you know? just, uh, it sucks to lose the way we lost to the worst team. And yeah. if if I saw it and you saw it, I'm sure Bruno saw that. I, I put a lot of blame on the forwards missing assignments. Right. I put blame on, you know, the defense for making those defensive mistakes. Yeah. Um, and we need you know, Forsling back, man. <laughs> we need, I mean, so I got a text from a buddy of mine this morning. He's all ri- he's all ripped and ready to, to send Lundell off for Chikrin. I'm like, no, I haven't responded to him yet. But Taunts, if you're if you're watching, brother, we we had we're missing Forsling and Ulevi, which which there's a huge drop off. Um, and that's well, what Forsling I, Forsling for sure. You know how I feel about Forsling. Yeah, yeah. you know, no, and that's what we've been saying. He's the, he's the steadiest the steadiest defenseman we have and yeah you know bad him going down so um well, it was just COVID, know, so it's not an yeah so how least. long how long does he have to stay quarantined a week i guess it's until i don't know the rules man they keep changing them you would assume it's until he tests negative um so well, i hope i hope they have him back yeah today in fact i'll uh i'll send um I'll send George a text. Maybe he knows. Right, right. I wonder how far Achari is from coming back because he's on the trip. Um, they, but they've they've not put out any information about it at all. He might so. be on the trip just for like you know bonding. Yeah, you know, like being with the boys again. Yeah, he's right. Obviously, he's obviously been away from them for a while. So. Right, right, right. Anyway, yeah. we need got- to come home. You know, I don't know how many how many games do we have at. Uh, <laughs> At home. I sent you the schedule, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have the, the it, it on me right now. I know the first game is Vegas. So right. we, we yeah, better I'm going, get right I'm quick. going to that game. Okay. Um do you do do you throw Spencer Knight back out there Tuesday? I mean, Bob don't exactly he didn't look exactly fresh. No, they last play night. by they play I play night tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I, I would, I would, I would, there's no reason to just completely wear out Bob with nights. You know, I play, play, I play night. night at Winnipeg. I play Bob against Vegas. And yeah. then it's a toss up between Bob and, uh, Bob and, um, night for, right. uh, Saturday. So we got two game, only two games at home, Thursday and Saturday. Right. And then we're back on the road in Columbus on Monday, the 31st, mm. Tuesday, the first, another back-to-back mm. against the Rangers. All right. And then we have the break. 
So we get we get the Rangers in the back end of a back to back. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> Thanks, NHL. We appreciate that. That's that's beautiful. Yeah, we definitely didn't, you know, <laughs> we always get screwed with the oh, another thing last night was the referees. Oh I think yeah, the referees, you know, they, they missed some obvious calls against them on us. Right. I think, you know, you know, I mean. One is this, I, you know, I, I, and Goldie mentioned it was at the end of the game where Barkoff was behind the net in the corner. And yeah, like, he's got it. He was like draped all over him. That's yeah. the only way to, that's the yeah. only way to stop Barkoff. Yeah. Right. 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 But, um, you know, some of the penalties that were called now, did you see the Vetrano penalty? I did. I didn't see it. They didn't show it. They, I, I, I missed it. Now, Randy told me that, they were not going off the Bally's camera feed. Right. Because they didn't have a crew out there. They yeah, were going yeah. off the Krakens and they did a terrible job of showing replays, Panther related replays, right. like Bally's, like Bally would. Right. I so see. Um, I didn't really see the penalty. All I heard was that, you know, it was kind of like they didn't know why he was penalized. Right. But Put it, even putting himself in that position to get a penalty in a in a in a crucial part of a game. Well, that's, so that's I've, I've really soured on Vetrano. Yeah, I can't wait for them to get rid of him because even if you know you put Mammon back and you got Thornton and whatnot, I would really like to see Hepperniemi. You know. Yeah. Yeah, above I mean, above Datasenko, and I know we're both Jones in to see what Noel can do. I don't think they're going to bring him up this year. No, Maybe. no. It doesn't sound um, like he's been. Winning. But Heponiemi brings a lot to the table, and I think they should give him a shot. Yeah. No, and but he, I think, I think take Tippett out of the lineup, keep him out of the lineup. Well, it wouldn't work. Yeah. I mean, once, once Hornquist comes back, because we only have so many guys. Um, yeah. So right now, Marchman's playing on that fourth line. So you figure when Hornquist comes back, move Marchman up, Marchman and be, Mammon. It's. It should and be it should be Lundell with um, Marchman and Mammon, and then see that's the thing. I I don't know Marchment well, Marchment and uh, Mammon with Lundell. Right. Well, those are, those are the only options because you're going to put yeah. Hornquist back down with with Lusterinen and and Lomberg. So I mean that's, that's why they why, keep going Tippett why, out there. That's why Tippett and uh, Vetrano should be out. And as I told you via text. Nobody's taken Vetrano unless they're a cup contender and they want goal scoring. Yeah. Even though he really, I mean, he's a goal scorer that hasn't scored anything for us this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think he's going to be part of an Arizona deal because of his cap space. I don't think we're going to make that deal. If if no. what they're asking for is anything close to the truth, it, that's all bullshit. Okay, <laughs> and and the fact that like on the on the pregame stream that you do, the fact that Twitter, the fact that people are even talking about it, like you said, it's ridiculous, ludicrous, right. or whatever. I mean, there should be no conversation because it's one hundred and ten percent that Zito is not trading Knight, our future goalie. And right. he's not trading Lundell, right. our future, you know, Barkov 2.0. Exactly. There's no way it's no. not happening. It's not happening. So, so that's why, you know, I don't think that deal's going through unless right. we're just um, being told that this is what Arizona wants and they're not flexible. Because you know right. what? At the end of the day, there's been deals made where – you know, teams want look at Eichel. Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> with Eichel, the, I, I, they, and, you know, um, Buffalo didn't get three first round picks. No, no. You, that's what, that's what, you know, when the, when the trade talks were, you know, starting, when he said he wanted out, right. They were like, Buffalo is going to want three first round picks. Right. So well, who knows? But, but again, well, what I said was um, tip it. With Carlson or Kerstad, you even have Prisky, but I I don't really want him traded either. But um, right, they so got you know an active and Nudavara is basically gone. I mean, yeah, 
I don't even know where he is. I think he's on LTIR. He's on LTIR. So, I mean, they could trade the rights to him just as a right. throw in. Right. And then give him a second round or maybe, a, you know, a third and a fourth. I don't know. Yeah. All I know is I, I wouldn't trade. We don't have a first round pick this right. year. Right, right. I wouldn't trade next year's first round pick. But remember with draft picks, usually there's 17, 18 year old kids that are going to go back to college or go back to juniors and they need at least one, two, maybe three years of maturing. Right. You know, Lundell, Ekblad, Bar they're exceptions to the rule. But right. For the most part, quite honestly, we don't need draft picks. We don't need new, you know, kids that we drafted. Right. We need, we have assets. We have prospects right. in the minors that we drafted right. two, three years ago. Right. That could come in and, and step up. We're good for the next two, three years. Yeah, for, for this for so, this window right now that we have, absolutely. Um, it, so as far as I'm concerned, if they want draft picks, trade the draft picks. But right. you and I are not, and anybody else is not Bill Zito. Right. You know, he's probably, <laughs> no. smart, he's probably smarter than all of us. Bill, you, can't, Bill. <laughs> you, can't, you can't say he's made a bad move yet. No. And yet. No, well... No, the only the only moderately questionable move, and it's not like it hasn't, was the Joel Thornton thing. But you get it, you know. Right. That was the only move that kind of didn't didn't it didn't seem like a Zito move. I that, know. You know I, I, I told mean? you. I told you why that deal was done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So enough of that. You got enough something. Of that. Yeah, enough of that. We 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 blew it. We'll 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 we'll, we'll go take care of Winnipeg on Tuesday. And then um, we better have our we better have our stuff together for for Thursday because Vegas is coming in, and I don't care who and what. <laughs> that's gonna be there. May be twenty goals scored in that game. <laughs> yeah, Vegas, Vegas is definitely. Um, yeah, that's gonna that's, that's gonna it, be a it, real it, test. That's listen, gonna, the next three four opponents, they all know what happened last night. And yeah. they're probably thinking, hey, these guys, they, they're not unbeatable, invincible, right. and this is how we have to do. I don't even think Seattle had a game plan like, um, like Calgary did. No, that's Calgary, just their style. Calgary wants to watch the Carolina games from right. last year because they basically mimic what Carolina did. And right. that's, that's basically hit us every time – you know, a player gets the puck and just smother the, the middle of the ice. Right, right. Oh, so, um, so. we didn't know how to counter that other right. than, you know, dumping the puck in and chasing. Yeah, that's what we did. You know, a lot we're, of dumping we're good in the, the puck battle. So, yeah. anyway, that's it. Yep, moving on. All right, guys. We appreciate it. Make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you know when I go live. I will be live next one hour before the game on Tuesday. I believe the game's at eight. That means the live stream starts at seven. It's just an hour pregame. So that makes Stu happy. I'm not, I'm not streaming the entire game. And um, it's Monday, so we will be back. Stu and I will be back Wednesday morning after the Winnipeg game. And I will see you guys in the pregame tomorrow. Hopefully Wednesday. Yeah, I will have. Yeah, hopefully. Victory yeah, a victory cigar. I don't like doing these with not having my. No, no, no. It's not. It, it's it's not the same. 